Preach your message. Second Kings chapter 2, 1 o'clock this morning. God woke me up. Actually, I don't think I ever went to bed. He just woke my spirit up into a greater place in Him. Second Kings chapter 2. And the very first thing that it says, it stuck out. It says, it came to pass. And I stopped there. I stopped there. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He says, in this season, come on, some of you have been believing for breakthrough. Amen. Some of you have been believing for relationships to be restored. Some of you have been sick in your body. You've been believing for healing. You've been believing for your husband to come on to stand next to you and minister right there with you. You've been, you've been waiting. You've been waiting for your children to stand in the place in the house of God. You've been waiting for a lot of things to happen in your life. And the Holy Spirit woke me up and he said, it came to pass. He said, this is the season, honey, where every breakthrough that you have been wanting, every healing that you've been wanting, come on, you're going to just come to somebody and you say, you know, you know the healing that I've been believing for? You know the salvation that I've been believing my family for? Come on, let me just share with you, he came to do that. Come on, you know that, that, that sickness that was all over my body and I was going to go down with cancer? Come on, let me just share something with you. It came to pass. Come on, I've been believing for my children to be saved. I've been believing for them to be on drugs and alcohol. I've been believing that they come back in. Come on, I just want to share with you. Come on, let me just share with you. My God did it again and it came to pass. Come on, I don't have to worry anymore. I don't have to driving and I don't have to worry. I don't have to do all those things anymore. I, honey, I don't even have to fast anymore. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> because he came to pass. To pass. Trying to get back to bed after God tells you that. It came to pass. It came to you want to title my message, you want to do whatever you want to do, title it that it came to pass. Because I'm prophetically declaring over some of you ladies here today, some of you men in this house, I know it's a woman's conference, but come on, the days are coming where you're not going to be able to separate the men and the women because the things of the spirit are going to grow so deep that they're not going to want to say, hey, I just want you to go. They're going to say, come on, I've got to get in these doors too. I'll pay the registration fee. I'll do what i got to do because I know that there's some deep that is calling inside of me that has got to come out right now. And I'm not going to just let the women get it. I'm not going to just let the men get it. I'm not going to just let the youth get it. Come on. I've got to get the deep things of God for myself. Hallelujah. This is not church games anymore. Come on. I say, I don't, I don't want to play church. I never wanted to play church. I don't want to play, and if, if I have to play church, I'm just going to leave the playground now. <laughs> Amen. I don't play good. Come on, prophet. I'm not a good kid in the playground of church and religion. Yes. Come on, but when, when you call a church out of a church, Amen. when the ecclesia comes out, it's because there's something deeper. Come on, Second Kings yeah. chapter 2. Yeah. You continue to read after that verse that says it came to pass. It talks about Elijah and Elijah telling Elisha, you can just stay here. Just tarry here, Elijah. You don't understand the things that I have to go. It's deeper right. Right. than where you're at. Yeah. Yeah. I know you gave up a lot of stuff, yeah. but yeah. I'm just telling you, it's okay, Elisha. If you want to stay right here, I'm uh, giving you the permission. I'm giving you the go ahead. Oh. I'm giving you the Go ahead with green light. If you just want to okay. stay right here, if you just want to remain on the outer courts today, if you just want to stay in the church religious mode, it's okay to do it. It's going to be okay to do it. Go ahead and stay in the light. Show. Come on, I'm talking about push revival. Oh. Elijah says, I don't think so. I will not. I will not, ladies, we have to get to the point where we don't want to stay where we're at. Hey, hey, I don't want to hey, stay hey, in Gilgal. Hey, now, Gilgal meant circle. That's right. That's right. That's right. 
Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I go through that last year. That's right. But you know what? It's the only way I know. It's my habit. It's my behavioral moments. It's my behavioral issues. You know, God can't deal with this because this is just the way I am. And so we're going to stay in that circle forever and ever and ever. And Elijah's telling her, if you want to stay there, go right ahead. Go right ahead. But let me tell you, I've been sent yeah. to Bethel. Come on, I'm here with you in Gilgal right now, sister. I'm here going around in circles yeah. with you. I love you. I love you, and I'm going to wipe your tears, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to ha have you hold my neck, and I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'll stay right here. But I just want you to know that I've been sent somewhere else. You can stay here. I will not. I will not. And we're talking about pushing. So here Elijah goes on to Bethel. Now Bethel is the house of God. Come on. Come on, some of us want to stay in the house of God forever. Now every, Come on now. every way that Elisha went, it was a place that they can continue to go back. Right. Now I can continue to come back and wipe your tears and let you hug my neck. But I just got to tell you, I've been sent a little bit further. I've been pushed a little bit more. I can't stay there. I'll come back and help you. But I've been sent somewhere else. I'll come back and I'll help you out. But I just want you to know I'm not going to be satisfied back there. I've been sent to the house of God. But hold on a minute. Because sometimes we get so comfortable in the house of God with our brothers and our sisters. Come on. It's comfortable when we come together with our believers that we can lift our hands and we can come in the crowd and we can dance like it is. But honey, when you're going through it all by yourself, say so. we don't know how to go by ourselves through something because we're so busy with our church assembly. Oh, no, I don't go to that church. i got to stay with my folks. i got to stay with my group, my denomination. I can't go visit you, sister. i got to stay right here. Come on. Come on, we get so stuck in that religious spirit that we can't go on when Elijah, Elijah comes and says, you know what, you can stay right there. I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you the green light, Elijah. I'm saying thumbs up. Come on, you can stay right there. But I've got to just tell you, I've been sent to Jericho. I've been sent somewhere else. I know I'm not right there now. I know it may not look like it to you. I know it may not look like I'm a mighty warrior. Come on, taking battles. It may not look like to you that I'm doing something awesome for the Lord. But honey, I'm risen yeah. over there already. Yeah. And Come if you want to stay there, right. go right ahead. That's right, go right ahead. And Elisha, what does he say? I will not. Now in the meantime, if you read the story, the Bible says that there was prophets mm -hmm. looking on just to see what Elisha was really going to do. That's right. Is he really going to go on? Is he really going to push like they say they're going to push? Are they really going to burn what they keep saying they're going to burn? Are they really going to do what they said that they were going to do? Are they really going to have the ministry that they keep telling me that they're going to have? Are they going to really be that mighty powerful woman that they keep telling me that they're going to be? I just got to see for myself. I'm just going to hang out in the background, if I may, please, so that I can see that if everything she says and everything she's been saying to me is really going to happen, is really going to come to pass. Is she really really going to push beyond her comfort zone today? Is she really going to go beyond the place that she is right now? Is she really going to go to the nations because she's just been in the state? Is she really going to have the anointing that is greater to set the captives free? Is she really going to raise the dead? I'm just going to have a back seat, front seat on this front. Come on. And Elisha had a sh then as well. He said nicely, very nicely, diplomacy. I already know that. Just quiet yourself. Just quiet yourself. I already know that. You see, because there's people watching your life right now. They're just waiting to see you mess up. Waiting to see you fail. Waiting to see you stay in the same circle. 
right. waiting. They're just, she's just going to stay, keep going through that same issue. That same issue is over and over and over. Or they're just going to stay in the house of God. They're just worshiping. They're just going to stay there. Come on. They're not ready to go into battle. They're not ready, come on, to go against the witches that are in this region. Come on. They want to go to the nations. They can't even change the climate in this room. They blame it on the food. I'm sleeping. I'm tired. But honey, you got some power and authority inside of you that you can change this atmosphere. And if you can't change this atmosphere, you can blame it on the food or the climate in here. But you have the power to change it. Don't tell me you want to go to the nations. You come in here, I'll sleep me after you eat dinner. Come on. Come on. Change the climate. Go beyond where you are. Step into some things you never stepped into, into the kingdom of God. Tap into some arenas of the supernatural that you've never tapped into before. Like she said, we cannot go and deliver anybody if we ourselves haven't been delivered yet. But we can't be delivered until we press beyond the place where we're at. Come on, Jericho is not a good place. It means a fragrant place, sister. That means when I'm going through the pressures, that means when I'm going through the stresses, right. and it feels like I'm being co um, compacted on every side, when it feels like I'm just being attacked on every area of my life, what is the fragrance that is going to come out of you? Come on. That's the place where we go through the hard times, honey. The kingdom suffers violence. We are going to have to come into the violent territories. Why? Because the Bible says that we are made in his image. Come on. And his likeness. Romans chapter 8 says that all creation is waiting, groaning for the manifestation of the sun, the yes, full grown yes, sun, not yes, the baby's tossed yes, to and fro. Yes. Come on, I have a three year old little granddaughter. When she walks in my room, it's I can hear her pitter pat. <laughs> but when my husband walks in the room, yes, yes. I can feel the footsteps yes. of a full grown sun. That's what yes, creation yes. is groaning for. That's there what creation go. is waiting for. For you and I to manifest. The Selim, the Demuth, the image, the likeness of our God so that the kingdom can come here on earth and we can see exactly who our God is. We can see who our Christ is so that we can see signs and wonders manifest in our area, in our city, in our region, in our nation. Changing the atmosphere, pressing beyond. It's a little bit too hard for me, prophetess, to go where you're going. That's okay, baby doll. Stay right there. I'll come back. I'll help you out next year. Next year, you want to go where I go? I'm here with you, honey. I'm here. I'll help you. I'll take you. But it's okay right now if, if you feel that it's just too much for you. If it feels like the depression of the anointing, the squeeze of the anointing is just a little bit too hard for you right now. Go ahead and just stay right here. I promise you I will come back when you're ready to press on. I promise you I will be there when you're ready to push to the next level. I promise you I will be back here in Raleigh at the Raleigh Community. Center, when you're ready to go back into the Holy of Holies, I promise you I will come and dry your tears and help you out when you're going through the circles of life. I promise you I will help you when you're in the church and you just want church religion. I promise at the time that you want more of God, I will be right there to press you. Yes. Yes. See, because he says, I've been sent to Jordan. I wished. Elisha, I could stay with you right here. And Jer, I wish I could just help you out of all your struggles. I wish I could just stay and hold your back hand up, while all the giants in the land are, are trying to come against you. I wish I could just stay right here, but you just don't understand. I've been sent somewhere else. I've been sent somewhere else. I can't stay here. Uh, if I stay here, I'll die. If I stay here, I'll die. I'm not satisfied in Gilgal anymore. I'm not satisfied in the house of God anymore. I love you, brothers and sisters. I love you. I love to come and worship, but I'm not satisfied with just 
for worshiping the temple. I'm not satisfied with just the worship in the four walls. I'm not satisfied. I can't stay here anymore. If you want to stay there for payment, I've got to push to another level. Come on. I've got to push to another dimension. I've got to push to another spiritual alignment. I've got to push to the supernatural. I've got to push to a greater place in God than right here. Because you see, the Jordan is a place where one ministry dies and another one arises. Come on, we want to press and push to the place that God has for us, Hannah. Where's my child? Where's my baby? It's not good enough that Panina has all the children and I have none. It's not good enough. Oh, maybe no, honey, ain't I better than ten sons? Right, right. Absolutely not. Right. I've got to have my own. Right. I've got to have my own. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to have my own identity. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to have my own anointing. I've got to have my own ministry. Yeah. I've got to have my own strength. Yeah. I've got to have my own growth and maturity. Yeah. I've got to have my own mind yeah. set on the things of God. I've got to have my own life right now in the kingdom of God. That's right. I can't stay here. I can't stay here. I'm sorry, Moses. My servant is dead. He did good. Come on, old religion did us good. That old religion, come on, brought us to this point right here. It got us. It got us that real death, that circle that I kept messing up over and over again. Come on. It got me to here today. Come on, that church, that church family, that assembling together. Come on. Wearing skirts down to there, shirts up to here, no makeup, hair up to there. Come on. It got me where I am today. I'm not lacking. I'm here where God wants me. I'm not mocking against them. I'm just saying, I can't stay there. You brought me this far, but I can't stay there. Come on, assemblies of God, I love you. You brought me this far, but I can't stay there. Come on, Catholicism, come on. You did what you had to do. You brought me to Jesus, but honey, I can't stay there. I've got to go on. I've got to move on. Come on, I will not stay and remain where I am today. Hallelujah. That's where God raises you up. Joshua, dry your tears, quit your moaning, groaning, complaining. Moses is dead. It's your time now. Come on, some of you've been waiting to hear God say it's your time now. Some of you've been waiting for God to open up the door and say, honey, baby, it's your time now. Some of you've just been waiting and waiting, waiting and longing for the day where God would say, it is your time now. That's what God told Joshua. Quit looking. To how it used that's to right. be. Yeah, that's right. Forget about the way it used to be. Forget about how it was done that's right. yesterday. Minister Pam, forget about the way you did Push Global Ministries yesterday. Even after you leave this, forget about how you did this today. Come on, forget about it. Just forget about it. Let's neither even consider it. Come on, God wants to rearrange our life. Yes. Wants to rearrange yeah. our things. Yeah. Come, take some things. He's, come, this is a season where we're going to see some reform. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Come back into the house. Amen. Bringing us back into what we were originally yeah. created. Come, yeah. come on, because church is a nomination, yeah. a tradition. Yeah. Everything paid its part to cause us, to mold us, and to make us into something that we're really not. Yeah. Yeah. And so God now has to reform us. Get rid of some behavioral issues that were put on us because of past things in our lives. That were put on us because of our childhood, our upbringing. Come on. He's got to tweak us and and mold us and and put us back on the potter's wheel and if he may just cause a mori to come. You see, he doesn't want to throw you out. He just wants to make you the way he originally intended you to be. And if he has to keep on marring you and breaking you, molding you, putting you through some hard issues and some hard struggles just to see if the fragrance of Christ is going to come out. Instead of the fragrance of complaining, the fragrance of gossiping, the fragrance
ignorance of every issue that we see in this natural realm. Yeah. Oh, my friends, instead of all that, we're going to see the fragrance, the aroma of Jesus when we walk in. Come on, we're the light that walks into a dark room. We're the salt that is on the food that is not salty. Come on, we are the thing that comes in and we bring the manifestation, the illumination of the Spirit. Come on. That's when blind eyes, honey, begin to open up. I know you sing good, you preach good, you look good, you smell good, but it's not about you in this house. It's not about me in this house. I don't care. Come on, it's about Christ manifesting. And if he has to manifest, come on, out of a five foot two blonde Barbie doll, come on, do what you gotta do, Lord. Do what you gotta do, Lord. Do what you gotta do. Use me however you want to use me. But I know I have six inch heels. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, but God is causing us to push a little bit further. You see, for the whole reason that Elijah, he, he pushed him. And I, we have a, a car dealer in our region, and they're called um, Memphis. And they have a commercial that says, push, pull, or drag. Anything mm. you bring, and we'll replace it with a new vehicle. Oh my God. And so I used to say, God, I tell you, I'm going to push, pull, and drag everybody I can. I know that. Come on. To the king. I'm going to push them, I'm going to pull them, I'm going to drag them if I must. And so the Lord began to show me the life of Elijah, the fathering, the fathering anointing. Come on. Some of you, honey, you, 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 you haven't had the luxury. My God. You haven't had the luxury or the convenience of having a natural father in your life. You haven't had the convenience, the love of a natural father that just take you for your hand. Come here, yeah, Pastor. Yeah, come yeah. here. Yeah. Take me by the hand and just lead me in the ways of God. Yeah, Let yeah. me just train you in the ways of God. Come here, my daughter. Let me just lead you. Come on. Let me just lead you. You're going to be stuck right there. I'll stay right there with you because I'm a father and I want to father you. I want to speak to you right where you're at. I'm not going to condemn you. I'm not going to say you're no good for nothing, but I'm just going to lead you. Okay, you ready to go on? I'm not going to be there. I'm going to lead you. I'm going to take you a little bit further today. Okay, wait a minute. You're stuck here with men issues. You're stuck here with boy issues. You're stuck here with your hormonal issues, I'm willing to father you and stay right here if I must. I don't care how long it takes, I'm going to be right here with you. I don't care if I have to camp out and just wipe your tears all night. I'm going to stay right here. Okay, honey, maybe you're ready to move on. Come on, I'm going to just take you right where you got to go. I'm just going to be able to lead you. Come on, but some of us have not had that luxury. Amen. That's right. Come on, come back here, my brother. Some of us have not had the luxury of having, having a Mr. T.D. Jakes take us by the hand right. and say, come on, you, you want to press scene in the things of ministry? Come on, I'm there. I'm going to lead you. I'm going right. to be right there for you. I'm going to take you down some roads, come on, of ministry. I'm going to train you in the ways of the Lord so that you can preach to preach, so that you can teach to teach, so that you can have some anointing on your life. I'm going to lead you. Okay, hold on a minute, honey. You're stuck right there. You're stuck in that mode. I'm going to stay right here with you, and I'm just going to wait upon you until you get to the point where you want a little bit more anointing, when you want a little bit more passion. When you want a little bit more compassion, when you want a little bit more desire, I'm going to stay right here. If you want to sit at my office desk and tell me all your things, all your issues, you want to vent, you just come right in here. You want to hug my neck, just go right ahead. Okay, you're ready to go on into the things of the ministry. I'll put you on TV. I'll give you the way. I'll show you the way. Come on. Some of us have not had the luxury of Mr. T. In our lives. Come on, some of you have not even had a husband who will be there for you when you're ready to step on to the next place in God that is there leading you. Say, baby doll, go as far as you can in your call. I'm not going to hold you back. I'm not going to stop you because I'm jealous and I'm the man of the house. Come on. Uh, and you're the weaker vessel. Come on. I'm the weaker vessel in my home because I, mean, I like to wear dresses. Yeah. I like my nails done. I, you know, I come against some ladies that say, oh, prophetess, come on, we're equal to men. 
But if you want to be equal to a man, I like my chair for that. I like my job. I like being provided for and taken care of. I know I like somebody. I don't want a man to just rub my back and just say, baby, you're the most beautiful thing on the planet. I like to hear those things. Come on, baby, you want to go shopping up while you're some more six-inch J-Lo shoes? You. I just want to give you whatever it is that you need. I want to just give you some makeup if you need makeup. I just want to, come on, go get your nails done. Here's $40, 50 Go get whatever you want done. Come on. I love being the weaker best for some time. I'm not going to get rid of my identity because of the church mode that wants to set me in to their ways and their tradition. Come on. I, I'm sorry I'm not going to do that. I, I have got to know who God called me to be. And if he says I'm the weaker vessel, honey, just pamper me. Let's just take advantage of this weaker vessel. Because it, it's okay. We're validated by God. It's okay. We're going to be blessed. But honey, when we step into the anointing, I tell you, when I get under the anointing right. woman of God, and my husband's in the room, and if he tries, tries to step on the anointing and tries to play a different key, a different note on the piano that is not going into the sensitivity of the things that God is releasing unto the prophet, if he steps out of line and tries to come in and get the mic when the anointing is going out and people are getting healed and delivered, come on, when he steps in and he tries to be the big boy and not give on over to who God has ordained and said to do, come on, that's when I pull rank. That's when I pull hold on a minute, honey. I'm sorry, but I don't need you to be my husband. I'm not the weaker vessel right now. Right now, God's giving me the word that is going to be delivered, that is going to set the captives free and change the atmosphere. Now, what God has given it to you, I'll sit back and I'll do what you want me to do. You see, the church has got it all wrong. But we're coming back to the ways that God has for us. Come on. And each time we press, each time we press, let me tell you, we may not have the T.D. Jakes and the fathers and the husbands right now, but let me just share something for you. Let me just set you free right now, ladies. God says now he's going to pour out the spirit of Elijah. Honey, that means you're not going to need no T.D. Jakes. <laughs> You're not going to need your husband Hi. prodding you, Hi. pushing you. You're not going to need your daddies that brought you into this dimension, into this earthly. Come on. You don't have that. Let me just set you free. Some of you ladies that are that don't have no husbands and you think that you can't get to the place in God because you don't have the man to push you. Come on. Some of you who don't have the daddies that are spiritual. They're not even serving the Lord. Come on. I'm just going to set you free tonight of wanting to think that you have to have that. Come on. Some of you who don't have the luxury of being ordained through the potter's house. Come on. Or Lakewood in, in Texas. Come on. Let me just set you for your little churches right there, the spirit of Elisha is going to be birthed and manifest, and upon you is going to come the fathering anointing that is going to be able to take you through the Gilgal to the Bethel, from the Bethel to the Jericho, from the Jericho into the Jordan. Because, honey, there's some impossible and passable Jordan that you are about hey. to step over. Amen. It is not over. God says, I am about to release a double portion. Yes, he is. Anointing. Yes, he is. Double portion. Anointing. Stand to your feet in this house. Come on, the anointing for a double portion is going to be released in this room right now. Come on, some of you who haven't had the luxury. I haven't had the luxury of all those things. I haven't had it convenienced to have it. Come on, I, I've been told I'm Paula White, but honey, I'm better than that. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take you. Highlight that one, underline that one. Come on, this is the hour where God is going to cause us to be raised up. 
whether we had what the last generation had or not. Whether I had a T.G. Jakes in my life or not, guess what? I'm headed to the things that God has destined my life to my be. God. I went beyond. Come on, we just celebrated. Those of you who celebrate the Jewish holiday, we just came out of um, the, the Feast of Tabernacles. My God. It's the place that when God brought them out, they would tabernacle. They would come in booths. And when they came for seven days, it was a ritual. Come on, we know that Jesus came. He did not come to take away those things, but he came to fulfill them. Yes. That means he took the 360 some other days and he put us into that place. So no longer do we just have to do it seven days. No longer do we just have to do it for a feast. He came in and fulfilled the very thing. But thank God for the Jewish laws and the traditions and the feasts that remind us. Come on, somebody. Remind us that God, you brought us out. You brought us out. You brought us out of our region. You brought us out of our chaos. You brought us out of that situation. You delivered me from this, 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 and this. You took me out of that place. And so now I'm the tabernacle. Now I'm the temple. We don't dwell in the tents and the booths anymore because now we're the tabernacle. So thank you that you're reminding me, oh God, that I'm going to have a clean heart in you. Thank you for reminding me these seven days, oh God, that now I am the tabernacle of God. It's also the end of the harvest. Amen. That means, baby doll, <laughs> it's a new beginning. Amen. It's a new harvest right. for you. It's a brand new day. Let me just say it's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Lift your hands up and just declare it over yourself. It's a brand new day. 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 Father, I thank you that you delivered me from the guilt yeah. But I, I may even be going through the same circles again and again right now. But Father, I refuse to stay. I just right now refuse and deny myself from staying in those same circles. I push a little bit further. I'm willing to go a little bit more with you, Elijah, because I know now the spirit of Elijah, the fathering mantle, is going to come. It's going to have to come to a five foot two blonde white lady. Come on. Let the spirit of Elijah come through her that pushes us beyond the gilgals of our lives, that pushes us beyond the circles, pushes us beyond on the behavioral modes, pushes us before, behind the, be above the, the comfortable zones, pushes us more greater, pushes us into another dimension in the spirit. I, I thought I knew some things, but God, I know you're saying you haven't seen nothing yet. I thought that I've seen some things, but God, I know that you're saying you haven't seen nothing yet. So God, I know that I can't stay here. So Father, because of the spirit of Elijah is pushing me into the Bethel, and I know even in the Bethel, some of you are saying, I can't stay behind these four walls. I'm not satisfied where I'm at right now. I'm just receiving the fathering spirit of Elijah in this room today, coming out of this woman, coming out of this prophetess, and I'm being pushed beyond the Bethel, being pushed beyond the house of God, lifting my hands. I'm just knowing church, and that's all I know. Now I'm going a little bit further, and I'm ready to go into battle. I'm ready to go and to get my fight on. I'm ready to go and rise up and be who you called me to be. I'm ready, oh God, to be anointed with the anointing from the kingdom. I'm ready to stand in the power, the authority that you've destined, predestined my life to walk in. I'm ready, oh God, to go into some realms and dimensions that only my calling is allowed to go into. I'm ready, oh God, to go against the Goliaths in my regions, in my cities, in my nation. I'm ready to fight the battle of God because I've gone beyond. But God, even those that are in this room that aren't even satisfied their little Goliaths have become little ants. And they just walk out the door and squish. Their Goliaths aren't anything anymore. All they got to do now is breathe. And the Goliaths fall down. And I, I, I want to push him beyond that today. So I thank you for releasing the spirit of Elisha into this room today that is causing me to come up to the Jordan where I'm about to face some impossible yes. realms, some things that in the natural there's no way getting 
out of. I, I'm about to, oh God, step into a place that God, once I step my foot into this overflowing river banks that even the people around me, the prophets around me are saying, don't you understand? You are about to lose your father. You are about to lose the person that's been pushing you, pressuring you. Come on, this is the hour, God, where I know that I can just smite the waters and the waters will part and I will be able to go forward onto the other ground. I know, oh God, that who I am in you. I know that Moses did what he had to do. I know that the denominations did what they had to do. But I know now, God, that it is my time, it is my anointing, it is my season to rise up and do what I got to do. Because until I do what I got to do, I'm not going to be able to cross this impossible Jordan. I'm not going to be able to get what you want me to get. I'm not able to do what you want me to do. I'm not going to be able to go where you want me to go. So Father, even now we surrender. Father, you don't want just a piece of us in this hour. You want our heart. The heart of David who will forever be upon the throne. Who will forever be upon the throne. So God creating us this hour, this moment, this day, a clean heart. Make a fresh start, a Genesis week, a new beginning out of the chaos of my whole entire life. I, I, I pushed. So, Father, I just lift my hands and just thank you. Thank you for the double portion. Double portion. I just release it right now all over this room. Just receive it. Receive it now as Elijah, the spirit of Elijah, just came in and pushed you. Pushed you to another level. You may not be at the level of the Jordan, but you have definitely pushed out of the place where you were yesterday. So, Father, we praise you. We magnify you. And come on, there's some healing going on. God is healing some bodies. Physical healing is going on. Physical healing. They're just under the anointing. I just sense that there's some of you that have some ailments, that have some infirmities in your natural physical body. God says He's healing it right now. As you're lifting your hands under the anointing, some of you come off. Your minds are being set free. You're being transformed in the Spirit of God right now. Spirit of truth is coming and it's confirming some things. Come on, sometimes we don't need the confirmation of man. Sometimes we don't need somebody to pat us on the back and say, You're doing okay. All we need is the Spirit of truth that confirms in our spirit. Yeah. We are the sons of God. That we've come to a different place in Him. Some of you are being set free and delivered today. You're being set free and delivered from some denominational issues and some traditions that you've been placed in. That God is now reforming you and He's bringing you out. He's causing you to come out of the complacency and come out of the ways and come out. Come on, some of you men in here, you're being set free even in a women's conference today. Some of you men in here, you're going to take on that fathering spirit and you're going to become, honey, come on the TDJ of today. Better, greater, bolder, stronger. Come on, we're going to see some mighty men being raised up. We haven't seen nothing yet. We've seen some mighty men out there. But honey, we haven't seen the mighty men like we were about to see. We've seen some mighty women of God preaching. But we haven't seen nothing yet. The women that God is about to raise up in this hour is going to be greater, bolder, stronger, more anointed than we have ever seen in our life. Some of you right now, where you're at, anointing is hitting you. Go ahead. Do what you got to do. Yes. You got to lay down, lay down. You got to yes. kneel down, yes. kneel down. Come on, we're going to let the Spirit of God do what He's got to do in these women tonight. We're going to let the Spirit of God. Some of you, come on, I just really sense there's some anointings and giftings. Amen. There's some tongues and interpretation of tongues. Yes that are being birthed in this house today. There's some gifts of the Spirit, words of knowledge, words of wisdom that are going to start being effective in this now season. There's going to be some prophecies that God is going to bring and it is going to be exactly, precisely the exactitude, the acumen of the Spirit is going to be for right now, this second, this moment. Put your hands on your stomach right now and just begin to pray. Just begin to release the deep wells. Just begin to release those deep wells, lady. There's some deep wells 
wells of the anointing that God is wanting to squeeze out. He's wanting to pull it all out of you. Come on. He's already placed absolutely everything that's needed and necessary. He's given you the tools. He's given you everything for your assignment. Just bring it out. Just birth it out. Just push it out. Do what you gotta do. Pray like you gotta pray. Travail like you gotta travail. Lay down and do what you gotta do. God is birthing some things. He's pushing us beyond the veil. Come on, David, rip the veil. He brought the ark out into the open. The ark is coming out for you and I now to manifest. Now, we don't have to wait for the man of God. We don't have to wait for the woman of God. Now it's in me and it's going to come out of me. Just begin to release it. I tell you, if I could just show you in the spirit realm the mighty men and women that are standing in this room today. Get ready for some great Go ahead, my sister. Do what you got to do. Come on, this is something that I'm going to refer to my sister right here in the, in the shirt up front. As she's being ministered to, God is healing her body. God is healing her body. Come on, we're in the heart of David. Heart of David. Come on, it, it doesn't measure up to how it measured up to yesterday. It, it's not about Saul performing and showing up. It's about grabbing hold of the kingdom of God. Grabbing hold of the heart of God and saying, God, I've got to have you in my life right now. No matter what it takes, no matter how hard it gets. Come on, some of you older mothers. God is creating a fresh start. A fresh start. Fresh start. It's not over, baby. It's not over. Come on, he's going to give you the youth that you thought you had already grown up at. He's going to give you the strength of the young. Come on. We need the mothers today. I need my mothers to say how me. Come on, I don't know. I have a wonderful mother, but I need the spiritual mothers that can be there for me. Come on, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it, ladies. If you've never had a mother in the church, you know, she may not travail with you. She may not do anything but wipe your tears. And oh my gosh, just what that alone does for young up-and-coming ministers. I need yes. my yes. mothers yes. in my church. Yes. Help me out, mothers, yes. when I need some help. Right. Help me out, because sometimes I just need to just kneel at your feet. And I don't need you to preach and preach to me. I don't need you to yes. say anything grand and anything yes. revelatory yes. or anything, anything. All That's I need right. to do is just have a place at your yes. feet. Yes. 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 Yay. That's right. Come on, the mothers are being restored. That's right. Thank you, God's reforming yes. everyone. Yes. We are yes. all vital yes, to the kingdom yes, in this hour. Talk yes, about Lord. God doing a new thing. Yes. Yes, Talk Lord. about God doing a new thing. Yes. We don't need those in the natural when God is pouring it out in the spirit. spirit. That's right. That's right. That's right. God's pouring it out in the spirit. That's in right. the last days and the Lord. Run! 
because of the dimensions that God has wanted to take you, but because of denomination and tradition kept you bound, I speak an increase that you'll be able to go and ascend and descend and bring it to this realm. That you'll be able to go into the heavenly realm and speak it right here into the earthly realm. That some of you come on next year with the push conferences, you're going to be doing exactly what I'm doing right now. Come on. You're going to be pushing up to the next level in Him. I speak it. I declare it. I call it forth right now. Some of you singers, some of you songs, I speak, create the nations to be opened up to you. It, it's a season to add, to build the kingdom on the revelation of Christ. Upon this revelation, I'm going to build. I'm going to benah the Hebrew word for build. It means I'm going to add sons and daughters. It's not enough. God, that you give me all this anointing and all this yeah. word and all this revelation, right. like Abram said. It's not enough that kings and priests are going to come out of me. It's not enough right. that I don't have right. a seed right. yeah. 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 to carry it on. Yeah. 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 So even now I release a seed to yeah. every man and every woman, every child that is in this house. I speak a seed right now to come into their lives, that they would be able to be not wherever 